Welcome back. It's great to welcome Dr. Bernie Power to the set. Now, there are very few people you could meet in the world who understand the interaction between Islam and Christianity, as well as Dr. Power, who teaches at the Melbourne School of Theology. Thanks so much for making time for us, Bernie. Thanks, James. Now, you spent a lot of time in predominantly Muslim countries in uh, South Asia and also in the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, how many years were you in those nations? Uh, about 21 years. So this is over two decades. So you really got to know the culture and also the variations within the religion, uh, how it's practiced uh, during that time. Mm -hmm. What are some of the key observations that you came away with? Mm. Probably the number one would be that Muslims are people just like us. They're people uh, who desire a stable family, a happy family, a good job, a just society. So in, in those ways, they're just like any other people. Right, but you know, you say that, but of course, for many of us sitting in the West, we think about 9-11 and, uh, and also the persecution of Christians, which is going on in many Muslim countries, many predominantly Muslim countries. We have to be honest about that. Why is that happening? Yeah, I distinguish between Muslims, the people, and Islam, the system. Mm -hmm. And Islam, the system, has come back from, from a long history of 1,400 years of the way that they've operated, and we're still seeing the effects of that today. So you, you talk about Islam as a political system. Is that what you mean? Political, military, economic, social, mm -hmm. it's all combined to, together. For Islam, they believe that it's all part of one system, which is very difficult to break the different parts, elements apart. So when Muslims move to a country like Australia or New Zealand or the US or, or other nations around the world, how can they integrate into society if the idea is this holistic uh, religious and civil society? all under the banner of Islam. For many of them, they uh, use this as an opportunity to move away from Islam and they don't practice. It's estimated only about 30% of Australia's Muslims would practice Islam. So mm -hmm. go to the mosque from year to year. 70% would just... Uh, would be operate. nominal. Very nominal, yes. But, but as a person of faith, that, that really isn't good news either, is it? No, I don't think so. And it can be the whole secularizing influence of the West that makes things difficult. But at the same time, it does remove them some of the, some of the strictures of uh, Islamic society and the Islamic system. And Muslims are much more free to uh, investigate other options than they are in their own countries. Now, I've heard that you've claimed that more Muslims have changed their faith and become Christians uh, during the last few years. I don't remember exactly how many than in the what, thousand years before that? Uh, maybe just, just enunciate exactly what your quote is. Yeah, so that. we'd say more, more Muslims have become Christians in the last 40 years than in the previous 1,000 years. Right. Now, how do you back that up? How, um, so that who's, was, keep, who's keeping count? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> um, Professor uh, Dudley Woodbury from uh, the Fuller School of Theology has done some research in this area, mm -hmm. and we're finding that both in uh, Muslim-majority countries and in the West, many people are turning to Christ. Now, but the, you know, we read in the press, and and we know from uh, from reports coming out from a variety of organisations that that when when Muslims become Christians, there can be very dire consequences. We think of the pastor in Iran who's on the death, uh, you know, being condemned to death. We think of honour killings. How common is this and how do people transcend or how do they avoid that problem? Yeah, it would depend a little bit on the society. In some places this is really quite uh, strongly held to, in others they're much more open and free mm -hmm. and also from family to family. So we knew of families in the Arabian Peninsula where maybe a son had come to faith in Christ and the family was quite okay with that. Okay. So it varies a bit. It varies from, from I guess, uh, if, if, you went, if you were a Christian and became a Muslim, you'd get a, a varying uh, degree of welcome uh, within the Christian community also, although mm -hmm. not normally uh, a physical attacks. No, no. And uh, we do find that often in Muslim-majority countries, people, uh, if they're not um, executed, then they may be imprisoned or the family may uh, take a pretty harsh action against them. So that does happen. Now, here we are in, in a free country, very diverse religious perspectives. Uh, we all have uh, friends who are Muslims. We have neighbors and, and, and work colleagues. How should we relate to them as Christians? Mm -hmm. I encourage people to be very open and very free in terms of uh, connecting with them. Be open about your faith. Don't uh, feel the need to hold back anything. Share with them, uh, pray with them, uh, read the scriptures with them. Mm -hmm. I encourage people to, to go for it because there's freedom here that Muslims won't receive within their own country. So you can do those kinds of things here. Is there a fear though that we will be offensive if we talk about, for example, that uh, the Christian understanding that 
the only way to reconcile to God is through the life and death, sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, who we believe is, is not just a man, not just a prophet, but the Son of God. Is that offensive when we share that idea? Uh, it can be offensive. It can also be liberating. And as Muslims come to understand who Jesus really is, and we have um, friends who have, have taken this step, it becomes a, a way for a new life to them. And I think unless we tell them that good news, then they're not going to ever hear it or be able to respond to it. So I encourage people to go for it. Are there any taboos that we should avoid? Um, depends a little bit on the family or the people that you're working with. Mm -hmm. With a very religious uh, Muslim, we would say uh, gender, don't cross the gender line, so male right. to male only. Um, issues like food, what kind of food you'd have in your house and serve them, right. those would be the kinds of things. So stay away from pork. Stay away from pork. But that's for me too, so I... Oh, right, okay, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, are there things that we could learn as Christians from Muslim society? They have a great devotion for God. And, and I, when I meet a Muslim, I'll often say to them, Muhammad, I really admire your zeal and the fact that you're seeking to serve God mm -hmm. as best you can because I'm the same as that. And we have that in common. Mm. So I think that's something that we, we can pick up. The openness about their faith, they're never ashamed of talking about Islam mm. and we should never be ashamed of talking about Jesus. Absolutely. So. I'm not ashamed of the gospel is what we're told, isn't it? Exactly. So, uh, I've been to a number of Muslim, predominantly Muslim countries myself, mm -hmm. Jordan, and and I grew up in Malaysia. So, and and one of the things that I I think that that uh, is impressive is the level of modesty, mm -hmm. no alcohol abuse, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, uh, as a vegetarian myself, I appreciate that they're not eating pigs at least. Yeah. Um, so, how when, when Muslims look at Western society and see all the decadence, the pornography, the the the, the, the immodesty, all the things that go on here, how do we respond when they say? You want me to become a Christian? I see your societies and they're just mired in decadence. Yes, I think we need to distinguish between the culture, the majority culture as, as and the belief of the people. So yeah. as Christians, we would say, we don't endorse any of those things either. We're just as shocked and horrified about them as you are. Mm. We would say, let's go back to the scriptures and read what the way that Christ told us to live and seek to follow that rather than following the norms of society. And it would be the same for Muslim people to say to them, within your society there's a fair bit of corruption, there's a fair bit of poverty, there's violence, right. there's a whole lot of things that Muslims wouldn't be proud of either, but you wouldn't see that as part of the norm of what you're required to do. We seem to live in a very uh, sinful and fallen world, <laughs> we do, no yes. matter where we are. Thank you so much for the wisdom that you're bringing, uh, Dr. Power. Thanks so much for spending time with us. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this short break.